Hi guys! So I think we all saw this video coming and it's approaching the end of the year, you know, we're starting the final month <laughs> of 2018. So I thought now is the time to talk about my new favourite author. So I'm sure many of you have guessed who it is already but in 2018 I essentially discovered one of my absolute new favourite authors. She is the standout author for me for the year. She's the author I've read the most books by this year and it's someone that I hadn't read previously and that is Juliette Marillier. So earlier this year, maybe like spring, early summer, I read my first book by Juliette Marillier and that just started me on a downward or upward spiral, whatever you want to call it, um, into, the, into her fiction. And I have now just finished my sixth book by Juliette Marillier. So I feel like it is safe to say that she's one of my favourite authors now and I feel comfortable talking about her. I've also been asked by quite a few people if I could do a video on where to start with Juliette Marillier but like I mentioned I only started reading her this year and generally when I like discover an author if I had a good experience with the first or second book that I picked up by them then I would just suggest that book. However I'm getting to know her series a little bit more now. She actually currently has 20 books in publication and has another one which is the beginning of a new series coming out in 2019. So I can definitely tell you my thoughts on the different series I've read so far and started and the styles and perhaps where you might like to start out of those ones but obviously I can't um, comment on the ones I haven't read yet but this might still be an interesting video to those of you who are interested in being Juliette Marillier or are already fans of Juliette Marillier and we can you know share our love together so essentially I just want to talk about her and the books I've read by her this year kind of my thoughts on them why I'm enjoying them so much um, and where I plan on going next so like I said I've read six books by her this year and I've technically started four series by her so I will go through what I have read quickly. Um, the first book I read by her this year was Wildwood Dancing, which is the first in a duology set in Romania. Uh, all of her books are set in medieval time periods, so just take that for granted for everything that I read by her anyway. This year it was set in a medieval time period, just in different places, and in this case we have Romania. And it's actually inspired by the fairy tale of the, the, the dancing sisters who like travel to the kind of like fairy realm once a month at night time together um, and dance with the fairies. And that's kind of like the premise of our sisters in this story. But their father is also recently taken ill and is going away to um, try and recover um, in, a, in a different location. So they then have to handle their own household but don't have any brothers. So their cousin steps in to help them but he is quite sexist, quite bossy, like is doesn't necessarily have their best interest at heart or at least um, their, their desires and passions. Um, he's more self-serving than that. Uh, and, and it's about what happens there and their interactions with the, the fairy world and how that seeps into their world. But like I said, this is a first in a duology, however you could completely read this as a standalone book. I haven't read the second book yet, but the second book essentially follows a different sister from the first book. And um, I started it, at least, and it's not even set in the same location at the beginning. So it's it's very much about um, this another sister's journey after the events of the first book. But you very much get a full rounded story in the first book. So in my head, I still kind of feel like I'm not in the middle of a series when it comes to that. Because it's not like um, I didn't get fulfilment from the first book. And I really enjoyed that. That was the first book I read by her and I was like, oh... There's so much promise there and this one I'm not sure whether it sits in the young adult or adult category. From having read some of Juliette Marley's other books it sits in between for me because I started one of her young adult series which very much uh, feels like quite fast paced young adult series um, and I've read a few of her adult books now and those feel like even more intricately woven than Wildwood Dancing. So it is perhaps young adult um, but it it's a kind of young adult book that even if you don't tend to read a lot of young adult, I think you would still enjoy it as an adult. Um, however, it is her adult books that I have truly fallen in love with. So I love that book because it inspired me to read more by her. And the second book I read by her was Daughter of the Forest, which is set in medieval Ireland. And I have talked about this book over and over and over again on my channel this year. You know, if you're not interested in hearing more about it, just click off this video. I loved it. It's one of the best books I've read all year. It's actually one of my new favourite books of all time. Um, these are all fantasy books if you haven't gathered that so far. 
and they all tend to interact with the fae world. So in this story we follow Sorka and again it's inspired by a fairy tale. Not all of her books are, um, but this one is and it's inspired by the Six Swan Brothers. So um, it's um, about uh, a, a Sorka's father marries a new woman who none of her and her brothers trust. She seems to be sort of like up to no good, she's a sorceress and she puts a curse on Sorka's brothers that she, she then has to um, break. But it's a very, very, like, slow, intricate novel, and that's why I love it. This is very much an adult fantasy book. Um, and it's the first in a six-part series called the Seven Water series, which is where um, Sorka and her brothers are from. It's their, like, kind of father's home is known as Seven Waters. And, um... They're dark, so there are dark, dark themes in these books. Um, there's a lot of violence, there's also sexual violence in them. Um, but personally I feel like it's all handled really well. I wouldn't say it's as bad as something like Game of Thrones, which I feel like is kind of over the top on the on the violence and the sexual violence and doesn't always explore the ramifications of any of that. Um, so I, it's not like that. Um, I think it very much, if it does um, deal with those topics, explores how those topics affect the characters later on in life. Um, and they're gorgeously written. It paints a beautiful, beautiful picture of medieval Ireland, the scenery, um, the settings, uh, the characters. The characters feel so well-rounded and you watch Sorka grow up and develop as a person throughout the first book. And there are romances in each of these books as well, in, in the centre of the Seven Water series. So originally Juliette Marley wrote three books in a trilogy, the Seven Waters trilogy, and I've actually read all of those books now, the second which is Son of Shadows, and the third book of which is um, Child of the Prophecy. And each one follows a different female member of the Seven Waters families over um, different generations. So the second book follows Sorka's daughter, and the third book follows Sorka's granddaughter, but not the daughter of the book who is the centre of the second book. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> and, and because of that, they also have very, like, well-rounded full plots, in a sense. Like, you get the satisfaction of a beginning, middle and ending, um, the completion of one character's story, um, but then those characters will pop up again in the sequels and you will get some overarching plot elements where maybe old antagonists return. But I like that you get the satisfaction of like a whole story and these books just filled me with so many emotions. I felt genuine anxiety over the future of the characters, which is like a special feeling to, to feel when you're reading a book. It means I've really connected with the characters and I really care about them and I'm also not certain that it's all going to work out for them which I think is actually important to keep you on tender hooks like that. And I love these books. I loved all three in the series and like I mentioned there's actually a further three that Juliette Marley went on to, to write. Um, also following members of the Seven Waters families, um, female members of the Seven Waters family, um, although I think they are all of the same generation. Uh, the same generation as the character in the third book, I think. Um, I haven't read those yet, but those were written after and I feel like um, there was a lot of closure at the end of Child of the Prophecy, which was the third book in the original trilogy, so I feel like they're maybe going to open up some new storylines and I'm really, really excited to read those when I do get to them because honestly, Daughter of the Forest, like I mentioned, were my new favourite books, new favourite series, and probably the one that I think if you're prepared for the sort of like violent side of it, and the darker side of it is where I would suggest starting because I just think it is gorgeous and I adore it. But in between reading um, the Seven Waters books, I also picked up the first book in the Shadowfell series, which is more of a traditional fantasy series in that the end of the first book does not give you closure. So the first book is called Shadowfell and it is actually set in medieval Scotland, which is one of my favourite elements of it because I love that, obviously. Like, they used a lot of, like, kind of, like... Scots language and like kind of little bits of Scottish folklore were embedded in there that I appreciate <laughs> naturally um, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it but these are definitely young adult books so I'm not always certain what constitutes the difference between young, ad young adult and adult but these are definitely marketed as young adult books I'll tell you what the differences are from her definitely adult books and those would be that first like I said it's a more traditional fantasy series in that um, well, it's a more traditional series in that events follow on from each other. I haven't read the second two books in this trilogy, but you do not get closure at the end of the first book. You are following the exact same plot and the exact same central character in the following books. So our main character in the first book is a young woman who has a, a, a gift um, 
So there are people in this world who have sort of like gifts that tie them to the Fae and the king um, in this sort of medieval version of Scotland does not want people to have magic, he doesn't want people to interact with the Fae so those who have these little talents and gifts are kind of hunted down and she has one of these so she's on the run trying to join um, a kind of rebellion that's going on on the outskirts um, of, of this kingdom um, so she's in search of these people that are re leading this rebellion. It's much more fast paced than the other books like you're following essentially like her questing story as she travels um, and the action feels a lot more like quick and fast paced and like things are moving quite quickly um, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun. It's not been my favourite of her books so far. So far I've rated all the books I've read by her five stars, except for Shadowfell, which I rated four stars, which is not a bad rating, obviously. But if we're comparing them, it's not been my favourite, but I still loved a lot of things about it, and I have the second book sitting on my bookshelf and we'll be reading it and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in that story but I think because it's slightly more fast paced it doesn't have as much of that slow intricate like character plot development and beautiful scenic descriptions that the Seven Water series has which isn't to everybody's tastes so Shadowfell might be better for you but I love that I love the slowness of the sh of the Seven Waters books that works for me and then the last book that I read by her which makes number six I just finished is the first in another series I know this is another trilogy called the Blackthorn and Grimm series and the reason I started this is because uh, um, two of my friends Lauren and Jill wanted to read it as well so we read it all together which was a really nice experience because as much like the Seven Water series, again this is an adult series, you are on tender hooks throughout this story and you very very much um, feel anxiety over the characters, what's going to happen, you're guessing the ending, you're figuring out clues, you're questioning everything and it's nice to do that with other people so I really enjoyed that. But the first book is called Dreamer's Pool, I don't think I, I said that. And this one's actually a multiple perspective story, so it's the first book by Juliet Murley I've read that is multiple perspective and it follows Blackthorn, Grimm, the two um, namesakes of the series, and Orin who is the prince of um, the location that Blackthorn and Grimm end up in. So Blackthorn and Grimm are essentially two prisoners that escape at the beginning of the story from a prison and travel to the area where Orin is prince. Um, Blackthorn is a wise woman, uh, she uh, so then kind of takes up the role of being the wise woman for this area and Grimm like just sort of like assists her for his own reasons he feels like a connection with Blackthorn and wants to stay with her and doesn't want to be on his own and it was really interesting reading this book because not only was it the first book by Juliet Murley I read that was multiple perspective it was also the first book by her that I read that had um male perspectives so um not all of the narrators were female uh and I Love this story as well. I think it has a lot in common with Seven Waters. It's a bit slower, you get to know the, the world and the characters and things take a while to get into the meat of the story but you don't mind. Um, so like perhaps the summary on the back gives away stuff that does happen a bit into the book but that's because it is quite a chunky little fantasy book. And this one again is set in Ireland and I think it's set like a little bit after the Seven Waters series because they're technically set in the same world but um, you don't need to read the Seven Water series, they're not connected. But at the same time, it had a lot of things that were different from the Seven Water series, like I mentioned, even just narratively. But the tone did feel slightly different, but at the same time it had that beautiful descriptions, that slow pacedness, um, and also the kind of darker side of things and life, and I think it kind of touched on some kind of like contemporary issues and it was really interesting in that sense um, and I really enjoyed this book I'm really looking forward to re reading the next ones in the series because although there is again like I've mentioned with most of her books like a fulfillment in the first story you, you you follow one kind of mystery and what's going on in this place and with Blackthorn and Grimm's lives in that first story and how they get wrapped up in Orin's life and what's going on there so I got a lot of fulfillment there but the sequels do follow the same characters so I still don't know a lot about Grimm or Blackthorn's past that I'd like to learn about and there's some overarching plots I need to follow. So this one's kind of an in-between of following the same characters 
but having some satisfaction at least um, in each book I imagine. So I'm looking forward to the sequel of this one as well. But as you can tell Juliet Murray writes a lot of series. She does have a standalone book however which is called Heart's Blood and that's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I actually have this one on audiobook so do plan on listening to it very soon um, and, and some of you may prefer going for a standalone book although like I said I really feel like you can read Daughter of the Forest or Wildwood Dancing as standalone books um, and I am looking forward to A Heart's Blood but she does also have a few more series. So I've got her website up in front of me because it's a really handy website um, that I've spent a lot of time looking at now. <laughs> it shows all of her book series. So I've already mentioned the Blackthorn and Grimm series which I've read, the Shadowfell series which I've started, Seven Mortars which I've started, Wildwood series which I've started. There are also the Bridey Chronicles and Saga of the Light Isles. So those are two other series that she has. Um, another one that's a trilogy, the Bridey Chronicles, and one that is a duology, Saga of the Light Isles. Um, and like I said, she has a new book coming out in a new series um, in 2019 and a lot of her series from what I gather are technically set in the same world so they're set in the same kind of time period and she is setting them in kind of our world but with fae elements so I think there is again like some perhaps interaction with the worlds of Seven Waters and Blackthorn and Grimm in her new series that's coming out from what she said but not like plot wise again I don't think you need to so, read the previous books to understand them. They're just um, like set in the same kind of medieval Irish world. Do let me know if you've read any more of these books by Juliet Murray and what your favourites are and what ones you particularly think I should read next and obviously I need to continue on with the series I have started but I just feel like I've fallen into this wonderful fantasy world which is the perfect balance of kind of um, historical fiction and fantasy for me. I love the interactions with the fey world. I think she does a gorgeous uh, job of describing the scenery and the places that you are and the journeys the characters go on as well as developing the characters and um, just has some really independent strong female leads and I don't necessarily mean strong in strength wise but just in what they um, manage to overcome and how kind of assured they are in themselves although particularly with Child of the Prophecy the protagonist is not always sure of herself but she becomes more sure of herself and I think that's a gorgeous journey to follow. If you're interested Juliette Marillier was originally born in New Zealand and now lives in Australia so um, that's kind of her background and like I mentioned there's often romances in these stories which I greatly enjoy. I am loving the way she develops the relationships in her book. There is not Love at first sight if that's something that you are scared of and hate in any of these books. But what more can I say really? This has just been an opportunity for me to gush about a new favourite author, perhaps give you some suggestions of where you might like to start based on what I've read. Um, I would love to know if you have read Juliette Murray because of my constant gushing about her this year. I will be continuing to read her throughout 2019 and I'm just really grateful I discovered her this year because this year for me has been a year of escapist reading in, in large part. Um, I've had difficulties spending a lot of time in my own head because of things like grief and reading a lot of fantasy and Juliette Murray has been escapism for me. It's been like a place for me to go and completely separate from the rest of the world um, and have these really like in-depth reading experiences so I've been very grateful for that this year um, and all I can do is recommend these books if you are at all interested in fantasy and historical fantasy. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, I would love to chat to you in the comments down below. So please do let me know your thoughts on Juliette Marilli, whether you have read her or are planning on reading her. I'd love to hear from you, but until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys.